Just throw the whole budget away. Hi, it's Elena of Financial Demix, where I give you the tips and tools to manage your money, increase your savings and your income, and decrease your debt. And today we're going to talk about the seven things that are missing from your budget. And make sure you stay through the end because four through seven, those are the big ones. So you try to get your money right and you make your first budget or you make your first budget in a while and because the numbers didn't exactly pan out the way that you thought they were going to pan out you're ready to throw the whole budget away and just not budget anymore which is not going to get you any closer to where you want to be so hopefully these seven things will help make your budget work for you all right the first thing that is missing from your budget is gifts when you go in to make your budget you come in with these numbers that are the way you want them to look, but not necessarily the way that they really are. And you forget about the things that you have going on during the month. So maybe you're the type of person when it's somebody's birthday, you like to give them a gift or go out to eat or do something with them. Well, you need to include that into your budget. It's the same thing for holidays. Like people are always like, oh my goodness, it's Christmas. Christmas is the same time every year. Every year, sis. It's not changing. So you need to continually contribute towards these gifts that you know are coming up or even holidays that you know that are coming up so that when they do come up, they don't throw your budget off. The second thing that is missing from your budget is membership. When it comes to memberships, we tend to forget them. Like we'll remember things like, you know, the gym. I hope you have the gym in your budget if you're going to the gym, but what we'll forget is some of these online memberships that we have to include in our budget and then we can't figure out why the numbers are not panning out the way that we expect them to. So one of the things that I like to keep in mind is I do have an online gym membership that is I think like $12 a month that hits on a certain date every month. And so the first month I forgot about it, which I forget to, we're not perfect just because we talk about personal finance, we also make mistakes. And then this, by the second month, it was in there. Another thing you should think about is like some of these subscription services, like if you get like the Etsy box or different box memberships or even the like Just Fab and Fabletics. With Just Fab and Fabletics, I know you have the opportunity to skip it. So you just automatically say, I'm not going to include it because I'm just going to skip it every month. And then one month you forget to skip it and it hits. What you need to do is I always include that membership into my budget. You can either put it under your fund money or give it a line itself. And then when I skip it, I put a zero. So then there is extra money to go towards other things. Now, you can also set up reminders on your phone so you don't forget to skip it, but you still need to include it in your budget because if you do forget, it may throw you off. The next item that you are missing from your budget is fun money. Now fun money, this term from what I know was made big by Dave Ramsey, I think is one of the pieces that I took from him that was very important and saves my budget most of the time. And that's because, let's be real, as much as you want to think that you're going to just chill and not do anything and not spend extra money on anything, mm, how realistic is that, right? You're going to spend money on something. I will tell you myself, I have planned out a week of meals for lunch before, made the meals, had them in my refrigerator, ran late one day, forgot my lunch got my lunch I had to eat I was starving because I didn't eat breakfast either <laughs> so I ended up spending money to eat lunch and guess where that money came from it came from my fun money I had money to spend so fun money is money you can spend any way you want to and I think it's really great to have it 
in your budget because even with everything that's going on now i might not be in the stores but i still have a little bit of money to spend if i see something i like i can purchase it without thinking nothing about it because i've already allocated for that money in my budget the fourth thing is a kid fun you heard me i talked about this before and you all if you have kids look they need a fun you need to contribute to it on a regular basis because guess what they don't stop doing? Growing, eating, wanting or needing something. <laughs> they just don't. So I'm gonna tell you a few things that I use my kid fund for. And truthfully y'all, even though my son's in college, like we always have, or at least I had, that mindset like, oh, go to college, I ain't really gotta do too much. No, they still need stuff from you because <laughs> they're broke, you know what I'm saying? Just like you needed stuff if you went to college from your parent. So here are a few things that a kid fund can help you with. Clothes, shoes, extracurricular activities, laptops, vacations, and so note on the vacations. So my kid used to also have, he had a very active social life. So sometimes he would take trips with friends or family members that I wasn't invited on <laughs> and I wasn't mad at it, but he took trips with, you know, other friends and family members and I used money from the kid fund to give him like, if, you know, if he needed to contribute towards the trip, it would come from there. Or even if he needed spending money, it would come from there. School supplies, laptops, and even summer camps. So you could use it for what you choose to. I initially started my kid fund just to cover my son's foot because it was growing out of control. I was replacing shoes every three months. And so I just was like, I cannot <laughs> not prepare for this. I, it was not working for me. And so I started the kid fund and then I just decided to continually put a, the same amount of money every time I got paid into this particular fund. And that allowed for me to always have money whenever it was needed for something like, okay, he hit a growth spurt or he needs some new clothes or even like last year, he was packing up to leave school when his laptop broke. We were thinking it was going to last. It was it was holding out. And right before school, the whole screen just, you know, acted a fool. I only had a week to get a laptop. Guess what? Kid fun. Pulled the money out of the kid fun. Got the new laptop. The fifth thing is clothes. Y'all, so most people don't really put clothes into their budget, but it is an important item to have into your budget, right? For me personally, I typically include my clothes with my fun money. But depending on the makeup of your family, you may want to include clothes as its own line item, especially if you have growing kids, right? If you don't want to include it in the kid fund, maybe you'll include just a line item for clothes that you're putting money towards every so often. It will really save your budget so that you're not spending like a large amount of money in one go and then it throws off all of the rest of your numbers. Especially when you get an idea of, you know, when clothes are typically purchased. I know for some people, you know, they purchase clothes around the back to school time, around, you know, fall, and then maybe around the beginning of spring, summer. And then other people have other schedules in which they typically purchase clothes. And then there's people who just purchase clothes on a consistent basis. But it's easier to continually to put money in a clothes fund. First of all, it'll give you a limit so you're not doing too much, but also it's gonna save that budget because you are not just all of a sudden spending like $100, $150 or even more on clothes. Instead, you were consistently putting, say, you know, 50, 25, whatever amount of dollars towards clothes on a consistent basis. And it keeps everything leveled. Number six, beauty and hair. I think I've mentioned on here that I have a hair fund because clearly is needed. With beauty and hair, right, there is just so many different options and things out there that 
you may want to try. Now, this is one of those categories that is not required to be in your budget. But if you are a person who is constantly like, you know, getting services done, like getting your hair done, getting your nails done, getting your feet done, getting waxes or massages or things like that, you should have a beauty and hair fund. It is going to help you keep things on track. Now, again, this is one of those categories which you can roll into your fund money. I personally like it separate because it allows for me to save up for other things that I want to get done. Like sometimes I contribute to the beauty and hair fund, but I'm not getting anything done at that time, but the money is still there. So later on when I want to get something done that has a larger price tag or pay for something that has a larger price tag, then I'm able to do it without throwing off my budget. I already typically have money there or I may not have enough and I know like, okay, at this point, I'll be able to get this particular thing done. So let me make sure like with the timing of the appointment and all of that. I think I'm a big fan of the Beauty and Hair Fund. Even if you are a DIYer, then it's still good to have a Beauty and Hair Fund. I like to do stuff myself sometimes. I like to try out new products that I don't need. I like to, you know, try out new hairstyles. And so that would allow me to do that because I have money set aside for that. And the seventh thing that is missing from your budget are your quarterly and yearly expenses. And some of those are like if you pay yearly for Amazon, because I don't know if you noticed, know it's cheaper to pay yearly for Amazon than to pay by the month. Um, if you have AAA, if you have car taxes or car registrations, if you have warehouse club membership, or even if you have like um, credit card annual fees. I was talking to a client who said, you know, this card was at zero and then they hit me with an annual fee and I wasn't expecting to pay for that because I forgot. And so if you actually continually put money to the side for these things, then when they do hit, you already have the money so that you're able to pull the money and just pay that particular expense. So with all of these expenses, they can easily be taken care of with sinking funds. I've talked about sinking funds a couple of times, so I will link one of the videos up here um, so that you can check it out and figure out how to set up your own sinking funds. It just really helps for you to always have money available when you need it for the things that you enjoy doing or even the things you don't enjoy but you know you have to pay for. So in the comments below, let me know which one of these things you are missing from your budget. And if you're not missing any of them, say it's taken care of. If this video was helpful for you, please hit the thumbs up button and share it with a friend that helps get it out to more people. And if you're not subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Like you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We see each other every week. We cool now. And I will see you next week with an all new video.